Sometimes I'll go on Google and I'll type in the name of a holiday and then a year from the not too distant past. And I really like the images I get to see because they feel sentimental and it's cool to get a glimpse into people's lives like that. Um, but when you do that with, with Halloween, one of the first things you notice is the costumes people are wearing. And a lot of them are not of the highest quality, definitely not compared to like the stuff that we have today. And that was actually the whole idea behind making this video was because I was looking at these photos and I was just like, okay, like why, why do they look so cheap? Um, and also just because I wanted an excuse to make a video uh, for Halloween because uh, I love Halloween. It is my favorite holiday. Um, and I enjoy it because I think Halloween is one of the only friend holidays. And what I mean by that is like Christmas or Thanksgiving or like any number of religious holidays, there's kind of a societal expectation where it's like you are going to get together with your family and you're going to spend time with them which is lovely, especially if you get along with your family like I do. Um, but I like the holidays where I get to like just hang out with my friends and do like party stuff. And Halloween is an excuse to do that. But obviously another wonderful part of Halloween is getting to see costumes, especially the homemade ones. I think homemade costumes really do show somebody's personality. And even if they do look corny, I am no stranger to that. I've made many corny Halloween costumes in the past. Um, they're still fun. But the store-bought Halloween costumes that we have today can look really, really cool. And it's very clear once you look at some of those older photos from Halloween celebrations in the past, uh, we have the superior uh, Halloween costumes now. We have a much better selection than we used to have. Because a lot of the costumes from like the 50s and the 60s that you could buy off the shelf, they don't hold up now. Um, and they look, they look very cheap. It's like a plastic mask with a plastic smock and like the smock itself doesn't even have like any cool details on it. It's typically just like the logo of whatever franchise uh, the costume is from. And truth be told, the costumes are very easy to make fun of when you see them in photos. And I did spend a lot of time when doing research of this video just being, just, just like laughing at all the different costumes that I was looking at. Um, but it's easy to do that without realizing that you know, there's a reason why those costumes looked the way they did, and also that they meant a lot to people who are wearing them, and there's a reason why they wore them. And so this video is an attempt to like explore that, explore why did Halloween costumes used to look that way, how did they get better, and also, interestingly, like, when you look at the history of Halloween costumes, it really shows you like the cultural shifts the Halloween has gone through as a holiday. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. So Halloween as a holiday, it's been celebrated in the United States for hundreds of years. Um, and it's it has its roots in Celtic culture. So it was brought here by Scottish and Irish immigrants. Um, there were many waves of Scottish and Irish immigration that happened, but it was at its peak between the late 1700s and the mid 1800s. And a major part of the Halloween tradition is wearing costumes. And the reasoning behind that is actually probably one that you've heard before. I definitely heard this reason and I didn't believe it for the longest time because it almost sounds like too convenient. Um, but the idea is that you wear these costumes to scare away evil spirits. Um, and that's actually true. That That is the reason like traditionally why people wore Halloween costumes. Um, and that shows in Halloween costumes that people were wearing in the US as early as the 1900s. Um, they were based on like scary uh, monsters and stuff. It would be like witches or you dress up um, as a ghost. And when you look at them, it's very clear that they're homemade and like, uh, you know, they look a little corny and charming in some ways. But there's a big shift in costume wearing for the holiday in the 1930s because there's a number of companies that start manufacturing Halloween costumes that are ready to wear. And this is something that we take for granted now that you can just like go to a store and you can just buy a shirt and there's like shelves and shelves of them and or or i can like go to goodwill and there's just like a million different like clothes for me to choose from um that level of access to clothing was not that way for most of human history we didn't really have that kind of access because clothes were something that you made at home it wasn't until technology during the industrial revolution made it possible to produce those things on a mass scale but the challenge for these companies was that everyone was already dressing up as like a ghost or a witch and so they were like well we need to find like new and fresh costume ideas to make and so they turned to pop culture and so these companies at the time like Halco was one of them um, they started making Popeye Halloween costumes. Another company called Collegeville Flag and Manufacturing, which was literally a flag manufacturing company. In fact, they used the fabric that they used for flags and used it to make uh, clothing. Uh, they made the Lone Ranger in the 1930s. 
And what these companies were doing in the 30s was planting the seeds for what, what I am calling the Halloween costume commercial revolution. I am putting that name out there, that is mine. But I use this word to describe the shift from homemade Halloween costumes that were focusing on the traditional pagan roots of the holiday to mass-produced Halloween costumes focusing on the celebration of pop culture. Which I guess is just a nice way of saying like when Halloween became a commercial holiday. Because that really happened in the 50s. Because the 50s was an awesome time for pop culture in the US. It was post-World War II and we had all these different comic book characters and all these different cartoon characters. And so all these Halloween costume manufacturing companies are like making bank off of this stuff. And they're going out and they're buying the rights from the companies that are making these characters so that they can manufacture these Halloween costumes. And so you get like Looney Tunes characters that are being turned into Halloween costumes. You're getting Superman and Batman turned into Halloween costumes. But these companies are competing with each other to get the rights to these characters. And so it kind of starts a race between companies to be like, okay, what's well, popular right now? We have to buy the rights to it so we can make a costume from it because it's gonna sell well on Halloween. Kids are gonna wanna wear it. But there's one company in particular that basically changes the game for that model. That company is called Ben Cooper and it was founded in 1937 and the name comes from one of the two brothers who founded the company. And what they were really, really good at doing is buying the rights to emerging intellectual properties. And what Ben Cooper tried to do was like get ahead of the game. They would be like, okay, listen, there's this new character. Maybe it's gonna be really popular. Let's buy the rights to it and see if that works out for us. So in the 60s, they bought the Flintstones characters and Flintstones happened to be a very popular cartoon. So they made some money off of making costumes for that. And in the 70s, they bought Star Wars, which was obviously a huge deal for them to get in on it that early. And they weren't just limiting themselves to fictional characters. They also bought the rights to like toys. So like in the 70s, they made a Rubik's Cube costume, which looked kind of interesting. And you'll notice that these costumes are not of the greatest quality. This is how we started this whole video. We're like, well, why do they look this way? They look really terrible. And it's because they were racing to get these things out of the market as quick as possible. These costumes were made to be very, very cheap. And so it's not because like the company itself was lazy and they're just like, okay, here, we got the rights to it. Let's just like make a really crappy costume. It was out of necessity. And it actually took a great deal of foresight for them to be able to be like, oh, this is going to be perhaps a really popular character. Let's buy the rights for it now. Maybe we can make some money off of it. And they were really successful. I mean, they did that with Star Wars. That's a, that's, that was a money maker. <laughs> and I have a couple examples that are just my favorites of showing how Ben Cooper was really good about quickly making a buck off of characters like this. Um, in 1962, they bought the rights to a new Marvel comic book character named Spider-Man, which nobody knew was gonna be very popular at the time, but they bought the rights to it and it got really big. And then the last one I'll show, and I had saved this one for last because uh, it, 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 it's probably the worst one, honestly. Um, it's Alien. In 1979, they bought the rights to it and they made this costume. And I, in my opinion, it doesn't even look like a xenomorph. Like, sure, like that's Spider-Man, clearly. But like, yeah. I was trying to think like what it reminded me of and I'm like, it looks like you took a sugar skull and a bondage mask and just put those two things together. And Ben Cooper was like wildly successful at doing this. Like this business model really worked out for them. Uh, there's one source I have that said in the 60s that Ben Cooper owned as much as 70 to 80% of the Halloween costume market. And I couldn't verify that number anywhere else, but I, I, I even if there's like a 20% margin of error, that's still ridiculous. Like that, that, that is a huge portion of the market to, to have complete control over. But something to think about here is that it wasn't just the business model that was making them a ton of money. It was also the fact that like, kids wanted to dress up as like their favorite Halloween characters. And so the quality of these costumes is not what mattered. It's just that a kid was like, I wanna dress up as Chewbacca this Halloween. And he could because Ben Cooper provided that costume, which in a way is pretty awesome. And I feel that too. Like I did the same thing as a kid. I dressed up as like Obi-Wan Kenobi one year. I get the Star Wars stuff. Um, and it, it's just fun. Like when you're a kid, you just want to be able to participate in Halloween in that way. And it's like, oh cool, I get to dress up as like a character that I think is awesome. I'm gonna do it. And that leads us pretty well into the second question of the video, which is like, how did Halloween costumes get better? Um, and there's two big reasons. One is in the 80s, uh, there was a cultural shift in Halloween and it basically favored quality over quantity. Um, and that's because Halloween became like a holiday that 
adults started celebrating too. There was kind of an understanding in like 50s, 60s, 70s, earlier than that, where it's like, this is a kid's holiday and kids dress up and they have fun. But in the 80s, it was like, dude, this is a time for adults to party too. Like we can get in on this. Um, and so Ben Cooper's costumes just really weren't cutting it. Um, and they actually went out of business. In 1992, they got bought up by a Ruby's costume company, which is still around today. But the other big thing, and this might seem like the most obvious thing, but it is very important, is that technology just got better. Like we have, like it, actually just to use this as an example, let's just talk about masks. All the old masks we were looking at were like either just cheap plastic or like really bad latex material. But now, thanks to like 3D printing technology, we're able to like make models of like a character and then use the negative of that model to get a mold for a mask. And there's also like new, granted way more expensive Halloween costume stuff on the market. Like you can get silicon masks and man, those like will mold around your face. Like it's like some, it's, it's like the, the stuff you see in movies, like that kind of level of, 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 of quality. But what this does make me think of, and one thing I guess I wanted to end the video on, um, is that even though you can buy a costume for Halloween, which is totally viable and like absolutely do it, I'm doing it this year actually, I do think there is something to be said about like how we should be maybe going back to Halloween's traditional roots, where we make our own costumes, we get to make them homemade, because I do think it shows a lot of character, and especially now in a world where we have access to like any clothing that you could want. Like there's so many thrift stores where you can get clothing at to make your own costumes. Like let's do it. Like that's that there's there's a lot of like there's a lot to celebrate in that. And it's there's there's kind of more heart that you can put into it that you just can't when you like purchase a costume off the shelf. And as easy as it is to like knock on those old Halloween costumes that Ben Cooper was making and just how cheap and cruddy they looked, they still hold a place in people's hearts. Um, last year, Ruby's the company that bought um, ben Cooper released a line of like vintage Ben Cooper costumes. There was like Batman and Superman. Um, they sold them for $30 a pop, which I don't know. I don't know what that says, but <laughs> it is a consumer holiday, folks. Yeah. So anyways, I hope you learned something about Halloween today, because I certainly did when doing the research for this. And man, it was, uh, it was definitely hard trying to figure out how to approach this video, because I didn't just want to like sit here and make fun of like the admittedly cruddy looking uh, Halloween costumes. Um, I was like, no, there has to be something that we can like learn here. And also that's not really my place. And like, it's easy to make fun of them, but yeah, they meant a lot to folks and there's a reason why they looked that way. So I took a lot of different approaches. I like filmed this thing. This thing is my fourth go around because I just didn't know what vibe I really wanted to go for. So it's a learning experience. So if you got something out of it, that's great. And I hope you have a happy Halloween. Bye-bye.